After the sixth year of the Hijrah, when the Prophet ﷺ enacted the Treaty of Hudaybiyah, this gave him the leeway to start negotiating and writing letters to other rulers. And so after the sixth year of the Hijrah, he began writing to the leaders of the Roman Empire and of the Sassanid or the Persian Empire. As you're all aware, he wrote to both Khusro, which is the leader of the Sassanid Empire, and to the Byzantine Empire in Rome. And so one of the letters he sent was to Kisra. And he sent Abdullah ibn Hudhafa to hand deliver the letter to the emperor of the Sassanid Empire. Abdullah ibn Hudhafa traveled all the way to Iran, to the capital Tesiphon. And of course, the capital itself is still preserved to this day. So he traveled to Tesiphon and he hand delivered the letter to Kisra after a long negotiation because Kisra refused to see him first. And then he insisted that there's a new ruler in Arabia and he's sending you a letter. He's a prophet of Allah, he's sending you a letter. So then he said to his dignitary or his minister, you take the letter. And Abdullah ibn Hudhafa said, my prophet sallallahu alayhi wa has commanded that I hand this to your hand. I'm not going to give it to anybody else. And so he was already with an attitude, Kisra. So he said, okay, hand it to me. So Abdullah ibn Hudhafa then gave it directly to Kisra in his hand. So Kisra opened it up and he read, Min Muhammad Rasulillah ila Kisra Azimi Faris. From Muhammad the Prophet وسلم, to Kisra, Kisra is his title, Khusro is his name, Azimi Faris, the ruler of Faris. Soon as he read this, he said, Who is this man to put his name before my name? From Muhammad Rasulillah to Kisra Azimi Faris. Automatically he gets given. He should put my name before his name. And then the rest of the letter goes on, Aslim Tuslim, the standard letters that the Prophet would send. And he became so angry at the letter that in front of Abdullah ibn Hudhafa, he tore up the letter and threw it back at him. And he told the people to get rid of this man, kick him out. And the anger and the arrogance was so much. So Abdullah ibn Hudhafa then returned back and told the Prophet wasallam what had transpired. And he said, he tore my letter up. Allah will tear his kingdom up. And subhanAllah, that is exactly what happened. How was that catalyst? How did Allah tear his kingdom up? That anger that got to him was the very anger that caused his whole kingdom. You have to realize this person, Kisra, he was the last great Sassanid emperor. He ruled for almost 40 years as the emperor from 590. When the Prophet was a young man, before the prophecy began, from 590, all the way until 628 when Allah revealed Alif Lam Mim Ghulibat al Rum. This is about Kisra fighting the emperor in Rome. Allah talked about Kisra's victory over Qaisar. Qaisar is the Caesar. And Allah revealed Alif Lam Mim Ghulibat al Rum about this one. That right now he won, but don't worry, eventually they're going to win back. This is the same Kisra. This was the last famous Kisra. After him, the Sassanid Empire comes to an end. In his lifetime, you would have thought the Sassanid Empire would last another thousand years. It is a miracle of Allah. If you look at the historians, they don't understand how the Sassanid Empire came to a screeching halt in barely 10 years. When they were at the pinnacle of their magnificence under Kisra. Kisra built an entire empire infrastructure. He attacked Rome multiple times. His legacy is amazing. The amount of poetry about him. He literally increased the legacy of the Sassanid Empire many notches. And yet in 10 years, the entire empire was gone. How did that happen? Interesting story. Both the Roman Emperor and the Persian Emperor had mini kingdoms in Arabia. So the mini kingdom that was under the Persian Empire was that of a province in Yemen. And the ruler of that province was named Badan. He was his own independent kingdom, but in reality, it's as if he's an extension of the Persian Emperor. So Kisra sends a letter to Badan after Abdullah ibn Hudhafa. He says to Badan, this man has irritated me, insulted me. Go send two of your best assassins and bodyguards and tell him he must present himself to me to excuse himself and I might forgive him. Otherwise, assassinate him. This was the order from Kisra to Badan. So Badan chose his two best assassins and the guys was their emissaries, but in reality, they're warriors or they're assassins. And he sends these two from Yemen, takes five, six days, you go up to Medina and you present this demand from Kisra. What is the demand? How arrogant. You must accompany 
these two back to Kisra and apologize. And if you do so, maybe you will be forgiven and you can have your mini kingdom. One of the books mentions, it's not with an authentic isnad because it's a second century book, but it mentions this detail. And that is these two emissaries, they were clean shaven and they had very long mustaches, which was the way of the Persians, right? And this was very atypical for the Arabs. So when the Prophet saw this, he said, who commanded you to have this? So they said, this is the custom of our king, the king of kings, because the title of Kisra was Shahin Shah, the king of kings. So this is the custom and the command of the Shahin Shah. So then according to this report, the Prophet said, as for me, my Lord has commanded me to trim the mustache and to grow the beard. Nonetheless, so he told these two, when they presented the message, he said, go back to your camp for the night, come back tomorrow morning and I will give you my answer. So these two emissaries decided if by tomorrow morning they didn't get the answer, they would then assassinate the Prophet So the next morning they came to the Prophet masjid and he said to them, what is your command again? So they said, our Rabb, our God, because Kisra called himself a God, our Rabb has commanded that you accompany us to him and apologize to him. So the Prophet Sallallahu said, go back to Badan, go tell him that my Rabb has killed his Rabb last night at such and such a time, at such and such a place. Now, pause here, what's going on? On the 25th of February, 628 CE, Kisra, one of his sons who had ran away from the kingdom, had become a renegade, was propped up by one of the other elite families. And when civil war takes place in a kingdom, what happens is the armies and the ministers and the generals who don't like the king, they find one of these disgruntled princes. And they say, oh, you are the next king. And they support this prince against the real king. So one of the powerful dynasties took this little kid and his name was Shahrayar. They took Shahrayar and they said, oh, you should be the king. We'll support you. Go revolt against your father. So they took Shahrayar and on that night, the 25th of February, 628, Shahrayar entered the city with the rebel army and he laid siege to his own father's house. And he took his father captive. And in front of his father, Kisra, he executed, I think, six or seven of his blood brothers and half-brothers in front of his father's house, his own blood brothers, in order to make sure there's no revolt now. I'm the last person left of your dynasty. And then he commanded Kisra to be executed. And with that execution, Shahrayar obviously became the king, but it is said he went mad because he killed his own father and brothers. And he ruled for barely a year or two. Then his sister Boran came into office. By the way, when the Kisra died, after the two messengers left, the Prophet ﷺ said, once Kisra dies, there shall never be a Kisra after him. Now technically, Shahrayar was a Kisra, but the power that he had was nothing. So when he said to these two messengers, Go back to your governor and tell him, my Rabb has killed your Rabb. They were shocked. How could you know yesterday? How would you get this news from Iran all the way to Medina is one month journey. When the two messengers came back, this is when Badan said, if he is a true prophet, then there is no way he could have found this information out unless his Lord told him. And indeed, the news came within 10 days that Kisra has been killed and Shahrayar is now the Kisra and exactly the time and the place that the Prophet ﷺ mentioned was exactly the place. Ibn Hisham mentions when Badan heard this, he embraced Islam. So in this interesting story, brothers and sisters, again, as Ibn Taymiyyah and others mentioned, this is one of the many signs of Nubuwa that how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala demonstrated the reality of the Prophet sallallahu and how also in this incident, multiple predictions, not just the incident of Kisra being killed, but the famous hadith is in Bukhari, when Kisra dies, there shall never be another Kisra after him. And subhanallah, it was because this son of his Shahrayar destroyed all of the royal family and he went mad. And when he went mad, nobody to take charge. His sister takes charge, Boran. Boran takes charge for a while, but you know, in that culture and society, a woman taking charge is not going to have the same impact. She had many revolts. She herself basically is overthrown. Then after her, a little child comes into place, Yazdajard, and that Yazdajard was to be the final assassin of the emperor. Then when the armies of the Sahaba came, 
Yes, the Jar was all alone. His whole family has been disintegrated. There's nobody left to fight. The entire civil war has reached a pinnacle. And it is because within the Sassanid Empire, there was a mini civil war going on. All of this planned by Allah. When the Sahaba came, the Sassanids couldn't put on a fight. Otherwise, technically, logistically, militarily, it would have been in human history impossible for a group of people at the time of the Arabs at that time to take on the Sassan the empire. It would have been logistically impossible, but for Allah, nothing is impossible. So Allah works in ways we don't understand. And so the same person who threatened and ridiculed the Prophet ﷺ, the same person was the cause of his own demise when he sent these two people to go do what he did. And subhanAllah, his own son revolted and executed the entire family. As Allah says, wa makaru wa makar Allah, wallahu khairul makirin. Allah plans and they plan and Allah's plan always wins.